This program is brought to you by Freekeen.com. Let's talk a little bit about, well, what everyone else is talking about for a change. Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing any names because I haven't been paying super close attention to that. But I finally have come up with a few counterintuitive, unusual thoughts about this situation. I kind of have to do that before I can do a commentary that's worth listening to. If it is worth listening to. But anyway, geez, I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't be sounding so chipper since this is ultimately a situation that did involve a murder or a, a killing. Uh, and it was tragic, so sorry. I, I'm sorry. But anyway, I think those who are upset about... Martin's death will appreciate some of these ideas. First, it's probably not so appropriate. Those people who are saying, well, this is not that big a deal. People shouldn't be talking about it so much. Why is everybody in the country making such a big deal out of it? And I kind of, there was points where I a little bit thought that way. But I don't anymore. And that's because I realized, if you think about it, I think we all understand. This is not about Trayvon Martin or George Zimmerman so much as it is about certain societal problems that this brings to the, the forefront. The historical mistreatment of black folks and the continued mistreatment of black folks. That's not at all trivial. I realize there have been murders out there that are much more grisly and, and uh, unjustified than what happened with Martin, but that does not stop racial uh, questions from being very important in a sense. Now, in, in principle, I don't like to recognize much of a difference between races. The differences are there, but relatively superficial. But I have to respect history, and history has always told us that race is a very important thing in terms of the way people relate to each other. So there's nothing wrong with having concerns in that area. But, but another legitimate concern that this whole thing brings up, which I guess will be of more appreciation to conservatives, is that it raises questions, very important questions, of whether there is a double standard in the use of the term racism. Uh, and whether black folks, in fact, have a protective melanin coating, coating now, rather than one that put them in danger 40 years ago. From a PR perspective, it is much more dangerous to hurt a black person than it is to hurt a white person. Unless you're the government. <laughs> they, they can do pretty much whatever they want and just put it in the name of something else. No one seems to really hold him very accountable. But anyway, the core point here is it's not wrong to consider this very important. Uh, it's not wrong to protest. It is wrong to horrifically protest. And I've certainly heard some uh, really wild stories and the, the, you know, the, the, the uh, trashing of you know, parts of L.A. to some limited extent. That's just... Abs doesn't make any sense. I mean, somebody's upset that George Zimmerman killed a black kid, so they do nothing to George Zimmerman but go for the nearest window and break it? Well, that's another important societal question that is worth talking about. And of course, they, what does that mean? What well, does it mean? does not mean black folks. It means some hood who lives in downtown LA or Compton or wherever. Those folks are about as representative of black people as Timothy McVeigh is of white people. But it is interesting how people almost automatically seem to ask the question when a white person kills a black person, they automatically ask, oh, well, did they do it because he was black? But if, uh, say, Michael Addison uh, kills uh, Officer Briggs from the Manchester Police Department, uh, well, I don't think anyone has ever asked whether Sticks Addison was was racist and that you know, why you know that was why he was doing it. It's like it never even came up, and this was the most infamous murder in modern New Hampshire history. Well, yeah, murder I think is probably about the right word for it. It's not as bad as murdering a child or a woman or an elderly person, but you know, 
maybe that question should have been raised. If we're going to be even-handed racially about these sort of things. Of course, even-handed racial this is never going to happen. It's not in human nature. Until the day when we all look half Asian, <laughs> then maybe it won't matter anymore. But by that time, there'll be a whole new race of people that are, you know, the, the people who were born on the moon. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Anyway, as much as I question whether Sticks Addison should be put to death and whether he should be more reviled than rapists and uh, uh, child murderers seem to be, I think he kind of got a pass, you know, when it come, comes to this question that was asked of George Zimmerman. Did you do it because he was fill-in-the-blank race? It's interesting how my old hero, Charles Krauthammer, who I now think of as something of uh, an enemy, philosophically, he was closer to the truth back in the 90s about this sort of thing than I was. I moved closer to his position on this one thing, while, of course, rejecting all of his neoconservatism. But what he used to say is, he said diversity is more likely to lead to warfare than it is to some kind of benefit. And I wish that he was wrong about this. And I try to prove him wrong in my life to a certain extent. I try not to live that belief. But I can't control what other people are, what they do, what history is, the implications of race in history. Krauthammer said America's destination is the Balkans. He said that back in the 90s. And it certainly could be with the right economic crisis. People get hungry. Things can degenerate very quickly from, again, I will use Bosnia as an example because this place is very similar to the United States. Maybe I should rephrase that. Old Yugoslavia was very similar to the United States. Um, the old conflict there, people thought it was the eternal conflict, was between communism and dissidents, at least since the founding of the communist state. And it's amazing how fast that conflict was wiped off the map and replaced by an ethnic conflict. And here in the United States, we've had now a long struggle with communism, followed by a long struggle with American corporatism. You know, the last 10 years it's heated up quite a bit, and there has been this sort of authoritarian, libertarian struggle going on and becoming more and more the center of American life. That can be wiped off the map in a week by ethnic conflict. No one in Bosnia was interested in ethnic conflict. Hardly anyone. Hardly anyone would fight at first. But after enough of your family members are dead, and you think ethnic group X did it, you're in the fight, and you kill members of ethnic group X. That's how it works historically. There's a British documentarian on the BBC, I think. I wish I could find his name. I'll maybe mention it at the end or put it in the video description. But he did a, a documentary about how he believes that the wars, if you look at the wars of the, of the 20th century, they were much more racial wars than they were ideological wars, and that just wasn't really focused on in the coverage of the wars. But you know, like the, 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 the uh, racial tensions inside Vietnam during the Vietnam War, the American, no, actually I can't remember what he was saying about America, but the, um, the ethnic element to World War I, where you had the, Tur the Turkish Armenians pretty much wiped off the map, he presented the Cold War in ethnic terms, too. White folks killing a lot of brown folks. Anyhow, lost my train of thought, but this is the kind of thing... I'm against it being this way, but I can't change it being this way. Race has a way of taking over. I guess I'll get around to fighting that again. If and when it supplants the ideological divide that currently dominates America. I wanted people in Yugoslavia to be free from authoritarian control. Then, I wanted them to be free from race-related violence. Yeah, well, the same thing here. There's nothing counterintuitive about that thought. This program is brought to you by Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard.